hello, hello, one, two. Hello, I'm going to be preppy, and as always, play a little music. It is aléatoire. Tout le temps. Aléatoire. As it fires up, I'm going to play a little bit of that for you. Quality testing, anyone who's logging on, quality test. de Franz Schubert for us today, and Bronnen van Dom Dore, known as the Evening Prayer. Hello everyone, for those of you tuning in, thank you, and for those of you watching, thank you. This is me, I'm Jonathan, and I'm here to help you out with a little bit of inspiration if you are feeling you're having a bad day with your cello practice. And it comes directly from one of my experiences recently with a student via Skype. She told me, I got on my cello as I usually do today and it simply didn't work. Nothing worked. I was playing my scales, I was playing the songs we were going through and nothing worked. What do you do? So the question I want to ask and answer is what do we do when we're having a bad day and we come to cello for solace? Well, I suggest, and this is coming from my experience since teaching, since I was a teenager, you need to understand that when you're working with this instrument, you must enjoy it. That's one thing. Yet, you must build the techniques and the musicality in order to enjoy it. But what if the technique you're working on is not correct? And if you keep going back to it, it's not correct. What do you do? That is when I suggest you honestly play. You enjoy just playing the instrument. With this current student, she's learning a song outside of our lessons on her own, a song she's learning by ear and writing down. And so one thing that is happening, are we, are we live yet? No active live stream. Hold on a moment. I don't think I'm live, am I live? I am live. Looks like the stream is healthy. Um, yes, I'm live, sorry, <laughs> I was just looking there. <laughs> Don't know. Um, yes. My wife is in the other room uh, doing uh, doing section, comment section, um, uh, stuff, stuff like that. So I'm going to zoom in right here on my side to the, to the comments so I can read your comments better. Zoom in. Do, do, do. Yes, I'm live. Hello, everyone. I'm really going to get over here. This way. There we go. One more, I gotta get this better. Mm. Uh, better. Okay. Don't you think Tchaikovsky, what should I play from Tchaikovsky? What should I arrange from Tchaikovsky? I'll get to that comment. Thank you, hello Juka, hello Ulyssa, and hello Juka again. So. <laughs> Uh, 
Tchaikovsky. Absolutely love Tchaikovsky. But I'll get to those comments after. I really want to talk about this reason why I'm doing this live stream. So going back to the student, she was working on something outside of lesson. And again, this is a student that is new at the instrument. and doesn't matter what level you're on, but she's new at the instrument and just was having a bad day. So we started the lesson with doing something that she absolutely enjoys, working on a song that she has already done on her own outside of lesson. And the key thing was she knew it by heart already. She adores the song, a song by a group called Ben Folds Five, called Brick from the 1990s, a beautiful song, which we're going to arrange for the channel. And she was able to really play the beautiful beginning ostinato all by heart. And we worked on some advanced technique, left-hand technique, with a student that ha was having a very bad day. So my suggestion to you is when you're having these bad days, is work on the music you absolutely love, not the stuff that you have been assigned and not the stuff that is far out there, stuff that is very accessible, that you're having fun with. And that's gonna change the brain to something else, which will go back to another thing that she was doing. Before we got on lesson, she was like, she said to me, I began and I kept failing. I tried to go back and kept failing, kept failing. Sometimes the persistence of doing a repeated action is going to give us the same result. Maybe over time we'll be able to get it, but if that one day it's not working, that means not, the brain is not ready. And she said to me, I tried doing this many times over and it just, uh, my brain wasn't ready. Then later I tried it on a different day and it just clicked and worked. This is what I'm talking about when it comes to the epigenetics of learning anything, and particularly when it comes to learning music. Check out the video about the neurology of learning music if you haven't already. It's incredibly important for you to understand that the brain requires time to process, to learn, and more importantly, to remember what works. That I cannot stress that enough. So in relation to this one student, she was working on a particular technique the day before, and she felt that she did good. The day after, which was the day of lesson, she goes back to the technique and she can't do it. And simply she just, it wasn't working. And the reason is it was too early for the brain. It was too early for that neuronal network to say, hey, that works, we remembered it, now let's do it again. You have to give the brain time to understand an activity work on how it works, remember how it works, and give it back to you when the activity comes again. I made the analogy of baking a cake or cooking a turkey in the oven. For all of you that like to cook, imagine if, especially cakes, cakes is the best analogy. You're baking a cake, so you worked on something when it comes to your shifting, let's say you're shifting from your fourth finger to your fourth finger on the A string, and this is our cake. I want to get that nice and well in tune. Well, on this one day, I did it very well and I felt I learned it. I did it five good repetitions and I felt like something worked. The next day, it didn't work. And I tried again and again and again and it didn't work. And I felt like it went back in time, not forward. This is our cake we're just building. We're, oh, excuse me, we're baking. We're building this network in our brain, but it was too early to call upon that. In other words, if you have a cake in the oven and you keep going and opening that door and opening that door and seeing, oh, does that cake, is that cake ready? Is the cake ready? Hmm. It's not going to be ready. It's going to take longer and longer and longer. Allow the brain time. If you can pull anything from this live stream, pull this. Allow your brain time to understand what worked and give it back to you when it is ready. You have to understand that our plasticity of our brain is different at different times of our lives. When something works at one time will not necessarily work the next time you, you go like the next day. It won't work like that. Some of you may take longer, a day or two, maybe even three or four days, not too long, but it will take some time for the brain to say, okay, it's ready. Here it is again. Now you can go. And you can 
finally play that in tune. So that's important for us to understand. When you're having a bad day, yet you come to cello, and because we play this, because we want to enjoy ourselves, we want to express a different part of ourselves, and this gives us the opportunity to do so, and you feel that this is failing you, and you're really feeling down, I want you to play something you super enjoy. Maybe it's your secret song no one knows you're working on. And have fun, truly. We don't work music. We play music. Which brings me to one thing I'm doing here in my life. Um, I want to apologize. I haven't been posting race recently because there's been some activities here in my life. I, we got a puppy and he's quiet right now. So that's taken a lot of my time. But new videos are coming next week. I also had a loss in my family. Um, we have a family of animals. We they're considered very close to our heart. And my wonderful chicken, um, ZZ, died um, this past week. And we she's not a chicken, she's a hen. And she was a beautiful little bird. And I loved her very much. She was my favorite. And um, so she, she passed. And we tried everything. So for all of you animal lovers out there, for all of you parents of wonderful angels of children, life is a super sacred, wonderful thing, but it's flimsy and it goes. And on that day... When ZZ passed, I was beside myself with emotion. I picked my cello up and I played Bach. And it's just one of those things that we do when we need to express ourselves. Bach wrote six suites. And his second suite is by far, in my opinion, one of the more sadder suites. And yes, it's just one of those things that we have to do. I, for some reason, when I'm feeling down, I play Bach. I play particularly the second suite. And I wasn't planning this, but I'll do that now. I'm going to play this for all of you. Just to get it out there, because sometimes we need to come to cello and share what's, what's been going on. And our cello never lies always tells the truth. It tells the truth whether you have practiced or not. <laughs> it tells the truth if you're frustrated. And it definitely tells the truth if you're happy or sad. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So, in times of both sadness and in happiness, cello gives us solace. And I want you to feel the same connection with your instrument just as much as I do. That's why I do this on this channel. I play happy music too, but today I wanted to do that because c'est la vie, ashes to ashes. Anyway, enough about that. That was, um, that was, that was, anyway, that was it. I do uh, want to address one of your comments. Um, once one of you watched the Siri Sonata, which is a collaboration I did with a student in uh, Germany, Joachim, and they were asking about the partition for the harpsichord. You can certainly buy that, certainly from him, if you like, and you can get online. He's supposed to be watching the live stream, and Joachim, if you're watching, please leave a comment as to where, I forget what his name is, but one of you guys left a comment as to where can you find the harpsichord part for that. So please get in contact with Joachim in Berlin. Hopefully he'll leave a comment. So again, so these, these tips, the, I call it tips for better cello practice when you've had a bad day. That day when I lost my bird, the last time I played that, that song I just played for you, there were tears running down my cello. I was, I was beside myself. And um, so I, you, you sometimes need to have that outlet for yourself. I didn't play something difficult and incredibly hard because I wanted to express myself. And sometimes we need to do that. So when you're having a bad day, go to your, your, your safe place, your place that makes you both happy. And if you're in your inner minor mood, as, as I call it, if you're feeling minor, play something minor. That's why we need to memorize our scales, memorize our key signatures. Yes, you memorize them because another one of my students says, there was so many things happening all at the same time. And one day I will make a video about this. We did a, we did a poll one day and we found out that the brain is doing 17 simultaneous actions when you're playing cello, 17, it's a lot. So I want you to understand that you can walk and have a conversation well, but if you walk, have a conversation and do something, that third thing is very difficult. Humans can do two things very well, but three things at the same time, something's going to lose. So when you're playing music, just like my six-year-old student told me today, if she can understand it, you can too. Music is not there for reading. It's there for reference. I Yes, I had it here during my suite, my performance for you just right now. But it's for reference. I have it memorized. It's by heart. And I play it the way I want to play it. Not necessarily exactly as is written with all the notes exactly in their rhythmic form. I play it the way I needed to play it. That's the last tip I'll give to you. Sometimes you need to make music completely your own. Play it the way you need to play it. And if it's one day happy and quick tempo, and if it's another day a more solemn tempo, or it's a different key, you have to find those places. With all my students, I tell them to think about your journey with cello as honestly a journey. I say it's a journey of music discovery because you a journey is not like a trip. It's not like a, a quick little séjour. It is, it is something that puts you in your mind. There will be evolution. There will be a process of discovery. And it will be a long time. Think about any journey. A common one a lot of us know about is the journey that Bilbo Baggins went on with Gandalf during the Lord of the Rings. It's a very, very long journey. And so when he finally returns back to the Shire, he is a different hobbit. <laughs> we all go on those journeys. When you return back, you're not the same as before. So when you do this with cello, understand that when you start on this, you must have put yourself, think of you as the Bilbo Baggins. You have started on this long quest. You're not, you're Bilbo and you're with Gandalf. You can call me Gandalf. <laughs> um, no, I'm no Ian um, McKellen. Um, but anyway, as you go along this quest, you will find that there are challenges ahead and there will be those challenges that you will succeed at. 
you will have the valleys, the very easy ones, and that should be a song that you should label, three songs and three different stages of your cello journey. The first song should be something very accessible, and it's the valley, if you will, something that you can find yourself playing within the first couple months of playing cello. The second song should be a little more challenging on the intermediate level, here in the foothills as you climb that mountain. And that is something that will take some time. Not too long, you see it accessible, but you will have to take lesson and learn how to learn how to play it. And the last song, that's the top of the mountain. After you have slayed smog, which he doesn't do, that is the importance. When you kill the dragon, when you have gone to the top of the mountain, what is that song? We all have that song. Some of you, it's the prelude. Some of you, it's the swan. For some of you, it's that. But for most of you, those two songs, this song, that song, and those are very recognizable songs on cello. You will be expected to play that. For all of my students who know what I'm going to say, those are our stairway songs, Stairway to Heaven. When I was growing up, anyone that played guitar had to know how to play Stairway to Heaven by Led Zeppelin. Well, cello players, your stairway is both the swan and, well, the prelude. You're going, oh yeah, what's that one song? I remember? What's the one song? That song is probably... <laughs> it's either that or... probably those two and if not then it's probably you know but the canon in D. it's three very recognizable songs a lot of people know about there's all the all excuse me there's a many other wonderful songs out there and we are living in a cello time a wonderful musical cello time fantastic time for cello there's game of thrones there's people writing music for cello which is great great i really love it when i was growing up i was a cello geek nobody thought it was cool I, I wasn't a cool kid. Nobody thought cello was cool. It wasn't something that you did. You know, you didn't have like, you know, someone playing at the royal wedding, everybody going gaga over this kid. You didn't have that. Nobody thought that I was, no cello player was any cool. It was, we were orchestra geeks. And nowadays, well, look at you guys. We're have a cello channel together. So anyway, to wrap it up, Back to my quick tips in reverse. On this journey of cello, you have your foothills, excuse me, you have your valley, your three songs, the easy song, the medium level, and the, and the top of the mountain, the most difficult songs, which will give you this sort of slope, easy, medium, and sort of difficult. And on those bad days, you should always play music. Don't work music, play music. Sometimes it's, if you learn something and you go back to it, the brain isn't, doesn't have developed that remembrance of what worked so it's too early work on something else don't always play your scales and your etudes have fun with cello and make the music your own have that song no one knows you're working on and play it for yourself because that is what really matters in the end it's how happy you are with the instrument and we as audience members one day hopefully you will play for people when you sit in front of people you should Enjoy the fact that you and cello are one. And I'm so happy that you've tuned in today and really, um, you know, well, be part of this channel. We're going for a big um, milestone at by July 4th. I'm not going to mention it. If we hit it, I'll talk about it. I'll live stream on July 4th. I need to schedule a live stream for, for um, the, the How to Read Music. For those of you who are coming from different claps, like violin, that's a question that comes to the channel a lot. It's so much easier on cello. But think of it like this. The G clef, which is clé de sol, 
It starts, well, the middle C is here. It's all everything's above. It's a, we play what's below all that. So bass clef is super simple to learn, especially if you're coming from the G clef. But if you're learning from G, that, that middle C, that below, the C below, that one there is this. And on cello, the same, the same position is here, is E natural, okay? <laughs> Somebody asked that recently. And last bit before I get to your comments is uh, my upcoming Cremona trip. I'm going to Italy at the end of this month. I'm going to go see my luthier, who, Edgar Rus, which made my cello. It's a very special meeting because he has made a five string cello. Now for some of you out there, you I met some of you, have purchased a five string cello kind of made in China and it's sort of just like this, but with an extra string on it. No, this is a master Cremonese luthier, a master luthier who made this master instrument. And his, his shop has made a second acoustic five-string cello. That's cool. And I'm going to play it. I'll be the first one to play it, hopefully. Well, first one to play it online. And I'm going to, of course, have a conversation with him. So if you have any questions for a luthier directly toward that, don't, don't, I don't care what it is. No question is too silly. No question will be refused, unless, of course, it's inappropriate. Um, but... Ask those questions here or L before then. It's the last week. And so I'll definitely be in Cremona once again. Love going back to Cremona. It's a wonderful place to be. Um, but yeah, I'm playing a five-string cello. You don't think... That's super cool. They make these instruments from scratch. They they don't go and buy an instrument and habituate it. No, they, they make it from scratch. So when you get a proper five-string cello, which he's going to describe the whole thing to me, you're going to... It has to be made four or five strings. The placement, everything's different. It's a completely different beast. And I'll be playing it for you. So I'm going to get to your comments before I leave because I have a cello lesson in LA very shortly um, on Skype. Wonderful thing. If you're interested, I do the Skype thing. I've been teaching a lot on Skype and it's a fantastic medium. So get in contact with me through my website if you're interested in some online lessons. So before I go, I would like to say oh thanks to everyone so first off thank you to all of you out there that are um tuning in thank you but also i need to give a special thanks to my new patrons really i want to appreciate all each and every one of you we have right so since i since i like to thank jonathan firm thank you jonathan cool name Thank you to Elvia Simansky. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. Elvia, sometimes you ask some wonderful questions. Thank you. That really matters. I appreciate it. Thank you, Ludek no, no, Novotny. I didn't practice these pronunciations. Thank you, Ludek. Any amount counts. Thank you, Shayla. I hope I'm saying that way. Shayla Bainham. Thank you, Shayla, very much. Thank you, Rachel, for being a Patreon. And thank you, Luke. Luke Tay, you're my latest Patreon. If you want to support the channel, Patreon is a method. You can get a scale book and that benefits you and me. And it benefits the channel. You know, the more I'm able to commit more of my time to this, the better. And I'm not going anywhere. I absolutely love doing this. And I do it because of what I'm going to get to right here is the is the comments i do it for this so let's see what you guys are saying today i'm gonna put this aside right going to the top here thank you aj very much thank you for the super chat and thank you just call me e Love it. Thank you very much as well. So we have Stefan from the Philippines. Hello. The March from the Nutcracker. Hmm. Which March? Um, there's a bum. That 
song? March. Oh, don't get me started on the Nutcracker. I love the Nutcracker. Le Casse Noisette. On dit Le Casse Noisette parce que uh, Tchaikovsky écrit tous les ballets en français. So, Le Casse Noisette. So, yes, I would love to do that. There is just so much when it comes to that. That's a Christmas thing, unfortunately. Um, but. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely there for that. Say thank you, everyone, for giving me my my Giovanna, Ulisse, Veronica. Hello from España. Hello, Foxy. Um, they are beautiful. Thank you. Yes, condolence. Thank you for all your condolences. Um, every life is precious. Whether it's a human life or even an insect's life, I just I just allowed an insect to leave. All life is precious. And for those of you that have friends that have a companion, an animal companion, that's not like your dog, your cat, but it's maybe a hamster. And they lose that hamster's life and that, that hamster dies. Please put the same importance as you will on your, your dog or your cat or your horse on that hamster. Because they bond, how, whatever bond you have with your beast, is a very important bond. In my hen, though she's a hen and she was dumb as a board, she had great personality and I loved her very much. And I grew to love her. She annoyed me. She annoyed my wife. She annoyed the both of us. She annoyed the everyone, but she was a wonderful hen. And no matter what anyone says, just be sensitive to their loss. If you have a friend come to you or a coworker come to you in the next coming weeks or months and they say, oh, my hamster died. That is a grave thing for them. Be very sensitive to that. Don't say, oh, it's just a hamster. It's just a chicken. We eat chickens. We love hens. It's a difference. It's not just a hamster or a lizard or a turtle or a fish. It really means a lot to that person. They're, they're expressing their bond with the animal. So again, thank you. That was my little adage about that right there. So um, hello, New Jersey. We got two people from New Jersey. Yes, uh, Luis, the Sachabans from the, um, that's wonderful. The Sachabans, she's talking about the Sachaban. If you are unfamiliar with the second suite. Sachaban from the second suite is a very sensitive song for me as well. I love the second suite, by the way. Love it. Um, check it out. It's incredible. You, for those of you who love the fifth, fifth is great. The second, the second is true. The second is incredible. And um, I have a story about the second suite I won't share today, but yeah, that's the Sarabon. So we have a question from Ulyssa. When's the last time I played in an orchestra? 2017. I played an orchestra here. We played in a church that was about 1,500 years old, to give you an example. Um, we played a fantastic, uh, fantastic, fantastic show. Fantastic show. We played, um, we played, um, you know, the the Pier Gint Suites. We played some Beethoven, um, Beethoven, some Mozart, and we played the Grieg uh, cello, uh, piano concerto, which was fantastic. I just loved it. Need to get back to that. But my channel is my priority. Absolutely love. 
I play a lot in California with a group called the California Pops Orchestra. Check them out if you're in Northern California. We did only Broadway tunes and everything. It was, a, it was very popular with the older crowd, but it's a long-standing group of people, dedicated musicians in the Northern California, and that was a fantastic experience. That was a just a gigging cellist who go there, show up and play, and I loved that, loved it. Also played with the Silicon, Silicon Valley Symphony for many years, and then um, now I'm here in France. So yeah. Hello West Palm Beach, and hello from London. Hello everyone. Here we question. Um, hello. When I read sheet music, how do I know if I should play an open note? That calls for experience. Sometimes, for instance, here at the beginning. <laughs> Sometimes you need to play an open string. It depends upon the the technique required. So you can always play an open. If you can play it with a fingered note, as in playing it up here in fourth position, that's an attempt that you can try. Hello, Kalish Kumar. Thank you. Love you, 4,000. <laughs> We have a question from Belgium. Hello, Stefan. Who uh, she wants to buy a Chinese cello. You were going to buy it too, but thanks to you, I avoided the mistake and rented one first year of solfege and cello. Well, Stefan, oh Stefan, Stefane, Stefane, Stefane. Don't know. Probably Stefan, Stefane, Stefane. <laughs> Sorry. Ici en France, on dit Stefan or Stefani. But avec un e. So um, very good. I'm glad you rented a cello. That's important, sort of uh, the part of the triad of our culture. You play cello, perform cello, and the luthier. That's the luthier is a very important component of our of our um, world. AJ says, speaking of Game of Thrones, would you be able to guide us through the theme someday? Well, I've already done videos on Reigns of Castamer. I'm not going to play it because I'll get copyright on this channel. <laughs> I don't want to get a copyright notice on my on this video, so I will do it. Um, if you want me to do a live stream just based upon that, why not? I'll do it definitely if more people request that. Um, it is important, classified says, to play fun pieces. And uh, Stefan says, the reins of custom air made her fall, made them fall in love with cello. Absolutely. And it's, I will play it, but I'll get a copyright claim. So go to the, go to the video. Sorry. Uh, anyway. Uh, so I got to uh, jump to my lesson. Um, code, I'll just answer these last few questions and get right to my lesson because he's, he's waiting for me there in, uh, in Los Angeles. Will the fifth string be higher or lower? Will be higher? Will be a high E? Um, um, it will be the high E. Hello, Veronica. Solo suggestions. I can do the, uh, the later on. I will not do that now. Do the notes in the spaces indicate that I should play an open string? No, because notes in the spaces are just a different note. There's their own lines and spaces. Coda bows. Coda bows are great bows. They're great bows. There. They're carbon fiber. They're great. The fifth string will be high E, everyone. <laughs> okay. Uh, hello, uh, Gutag. I will do that another time. Uh, the Adagio. Marcelo Adagio. I'll definitely keep that. I'll reference that in for the future. Hello, Brazil. And uh, I will, of course, I will play the whole suite for you if you want to. But I've got to go teach because that's what I do. So, you know, Rommel won't be happy if I'm late for our lesson. Yes, the Narch and the Nutcracker. Yes, if your bridge is moving, that's bad. So Entity 437, take care of that bridge. And... Um, <laughs> Hotel California, <laughs> Alex. Oh, oh, okay. I'll try that one. See, I've never. So this is this is something you should do. 
play cello. Then I'll leave you with this. So I've got it in my head. So I just got a request to play Hotel California. All right, I can play it wonderfully on the car, and I know it, it's in it's an F. It's got some some flats in there. So it's in C minor. <laughs> I think that's the beginning. That's the beginning of Alto California. Plenty of room at the. Oh, I don't got it in my head anymore. I have Bach in my head. So that's. I just did, attempted a little bit of that. So. And when not to play for, with vibrato when you have good uh, bow technique. Anyway, I would love to do more of that. I've got to go teach. Thank you for all of you. May God bless you. May the universe bless you. May you have a wonderful day, evening, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for supporting the channel. We got a milestone to get to. If you want to share, if you want to subscribe, if you want to tell people about this, this channel is not about me. It's about this right here. And if it's not about this, it's about those comments right here or down there. So thank you again for subscribing, sharing, and loving the channel as much. And have a wonderful day, a weekend, wherever you are in the world. Bye-bye. I'm, I'm stuck. I'm completely stuck. Okay. Bye-bye.